Hi, I'm Monique Sugimoto. And Michelle Fricke. And we are both archivists with the Palos Verdes Library District, and we'd like to welcome everybody to come and watch History on the Hill with us. On RPB TV. <laughs> so we'll see you there. Welcome back to another episode of History on the Hill. My name is Monique Sigimoto. I'm the archivist and local history librarian with the Palos Verdes Library District. We are in the local history center right now with... I'm Michelle Fricke, a fellow archivist. And I'm Sue Tittle, a library volunteer. Volunteer extraordinaire. Oh, um, so oh. today, today's topic, uh, we thought we would go over something that is really important to the peninsula, and that is um, education. Um, and the importance of education throughout time here on the peninsula. So we pulled a couple of different things. This was actually generated um, by our yearbook collection because yearbooks are probably um, one of the most um, consulted collections that we have. Sometimes we get questions, people want to see their grandfather or somebody wants to see themselves or when Rolling Hills High School um, shut down, somebody wants to know what was the school song. So we get lots of different questions uh, you know, that we can use our, our yearbooks for. So we thought we'd just kind of use that as our theme today and go over um, education. Um, I don't know if we can, we can show you some of our photographs later on, but when the peninsula was first being developed, almost 100 years ago now, and um, 2023 is going to be a big year for the peninsula, there was nothing here. Not even the buildings, of course, were not here, but the institutions were also not here. And one of the first institutions to be created was the Palos Verdes um, School District. There was, at one time, we were part of the Los Angeles Unified School District early on, but the residents at that time wanted their own school district. So they petitioned um, the, uh, the state legislature, the education department, and the Palos Verdes School District was born back in 1925. Students attended um, uh, classrooms in the, uh, the Gardner building for a little bit and uh, then until the Malaga Cove School, which is over in um, Palos Verdes Estates, was created and then kids went to, uh, went to the schools there. What's interesting about that is that at that time, the school, the Palos Verdes School District, was only a K through eight school. And so where did kids go to high school? They had to actually go off the peninsula to go to high school. They had to go to, some of them went to San Pedro High, some of them went to Narbonne High, uh, and then also Redondo Union High. So kids actually had to just go off of the peninsula for their high school years. So you're talking about the school having K through eight? Yeah. So when did the high school, when did they get their first high school on the peninsula? So it wasn't until 1961 that they got um, the high school on the peninsula. Wow. And so the high school was created, I think um, 1962 uh, is when Palos Verdes High School um, was created. And I'll have to go back and check that date, but that was our first high school um, on the peninsula, which is really extraordinary uh, that it took that long um, for the peninsula to get, um, to get its own high school, which is just fascinating. And if you think about the time period, we're talking post-World War II, um, with the huge uh, development and the boom in residential um, development here on the peninsula, the 50s and the 60s, of course they needed to have a place um, for the high school students because it was just really huge. So after we got Palos Verdes High School, it doesn't stop there because very soon after that we got Rolling Hills High School and Mural Lest High School. So if you're kind of doing this geographically, um, you can see that where the high schools are being built is where the population centers are kind of started being developed on the peninsula. So it's really um, a fascinating history um, about, you know, just how we got our different high schools. Right. And so where I grew up, there was uh, 
uh, kindergarten through eighth grade. Yeah. Um, so there was never any middle schools or junior highs that were on the peninsula? That is a great question. So until 1961, there was a lot of varied schools. There was, you know, individual schools. Some of them were K through eight. One was, you know, two through four. Another one was one through six. So it was really varied. And it was at the time that we became of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District that the school system actually got established so that your elementary is going to be, you know, K through six or that time period. Then your junior high school, seventh and eighth. And then your high schools were from ninth grade to, um, to 12th grade. Yeah, so it's really interesting that they, uh, you know, just to kind of see the development. And, you know, we had a boom in population, which necessitated the creation of schools. And then you had the kind of the decrease in population and schools had to consolidate and merge. Um, and we kind of see this flow um, in, within the school district uh, and, and the school district buildings. School, you, uh, so you might remember something with that. Closures. Closures, yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We liked the fact it was independent, of course, um, and we also liked the fact that they had a, at that time, they had a K, and I think they still do, it's K through five, and then six, seven, and eight, and then uh -huh. the high school is four years. Mm -hmm. and the LA City Schools, where we were from, it was a three-year high school, and I always thought ninth graders did not belong with seventh and eighth graders particularly, uh -huh. so that was my rationale for moving here. But shortly after we got our kids installed in school and everything was fine, they, um, as you say, the population went down and they had to close Valmonte School. And that was a very tumultuous time because nobody wanted to close that school. It was a really fine little neighborhood school and they picked other school. You know, it's always like, if you're gonna take my thing, I'm, I think your thing would be better to take. Yeah, yeah. There's, and if you want to read about all the wrangling and the committees and the whatever, we have a whole file in Belmont School mm -hmm. that you can read every newspaper clipping that was generated about it. Yeah, and that is actually a really good, um, a really good point. So we've got clippings files on the school district. And we have it divided, um, rest assured, according to date um, where, when it's the Palos Verdes School District versus the Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District, which makes your searching and your researching a lot easier. But we also have a really interesting collection. It's just kind of a mishmash of materials. And we have this collection called the um, Collection of Materials on Public Education on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And if you see that collection guide over there, we have a guide where we can look through the guide and it, we can find out what is included in um, the different boxes of, of materials. Um, so we'll, we know that, for instance, if we had one would find out about Malaga Cove School or Mira Less School, we can look into our collection guide and find something of interest um, that, we are, that we are looking for. We actually just used this, I was telling Michelle, um, and actually Sue um, pointed this out as well. Um, the Malaga Cove um, students, Malaga Cove school students back in the 1940s, um, I think it was 40, maybe 39 or 40, they created a time capsule letter. Um, and the time capsule letter was gonna be uh, opened up, and they did, there was actually a big celebration and the time capsule letter um, was opened. But it's really fascinating to see what life was like um, at that time. And um, we can pull that letter out and, and show you uh, what that looks like. Um, yeah. So with the yearbooks, you yep. know, not only do you have people's names and, uh, and their faces, but all the stories that are on the different type high schools and the ones that are here now and the ones that have been consolidated. And, um, and that's what's so fa uh, fabulous about this room, the Local History Center, is it's for all of you. It's for all <laughs> the residents to be able to bring those stories. So not only we have the yearbooks, we have some photography, mm -hmm. we have some oral history. Mm -hmm. but we also have the favorite memories of people or significant things that were more hard to handle, like <laughs> when, when Raleigh Hills school was closed. It's closed. That is 
probably one of the things every time somebody talks about Peninsula High School and they were uh, uh, when they and they went to the school when it was Rolling Hills High School they will always say you mean Rolling Hills High School <laughs> everyone and, of a certain age and yes. and this is not just my generation but several down uh -huh. call it Rolling Hills to this day to this day because that's what it was yep. to this day it, that's exactly right it was Rolling Hills it was Rolling Hills High School um, and, so that's fun yeah and then Besides the uh, unified school district, mm -hmm. then we also have some other schools that are on mm -hmm. the peninsula as well. Yep. Yep. So, and, and probably one of the um, one of the oldest ones on the hill um, is going to be the Chadwick School, um, which we have um, up on the hill, um, just right around where Crenshaw is. Is it? It's Crenshaw, right? Yeah, it's Crenshaw, not Father. Um, which I just think has a fascinating um, history. Um, you know, it started off as a seaside as the seaside school in San Pedro. Um, the uh, Margaret Chadwick and uh, Commander Chadwick were fortunate enough to get um, land. Uh, donated to them by the Vanderlip family to create the Chadwick School up there, and so they, uh, and that's where it went. It used to be a boarding school um, in its early days, which is fascinating. And um, because we have kind of a connection with Hollywood, um, there are a lot of famous people <laughs> who actually attended um, the Chadwick School. You were you were looking at the sent their kids to board there. Yeah, they, um, you know, actors, actresses, the families um, would send their children um, to board uh, in the, uh, you know, at the Chadwick School. Yeah. You were looking through the file and who do you remember was, was in there? I don't remember. Oh, well, I just really like um, Liza Minnelli. I just think she was, is very talented. Uh -huh. um, so it, it was kind of fun to see her name and, uh -huh. you know, some of the other names that are there. Uh -huh. So, again, for someone to come in and, and look at the old yearbooks. Which yep. Is kind of fun. Yeah. Old Chadwick yearbook. Yeah, and there's an old Chadwick um, yearbook. Actually, and, uh, and there are, uh, exactly, you can see, you can see everybody's signatures, I mean it is. Um, actually, we were really fortunate um, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, uh, the archivist who was hired um, at Chadwick came over here, we had a couple of conversations, and he noticed that we had the Chadwick yearbooks, and he asked if we needed to supplement them. And I said, we do, and I gave him a list of the ones we didn't have, so he shared some extra copies from their collection over with our collection, and that is just really, um, you know, special. That's kind of nice how in the archival community, that's how we, we work. We, we can, you know, share our, you know, collections or um, excess materials um, with each other. Right. Yeah. And then there is a small collection, one of these boxes oh, yeah. yep. of, for the Chadwick School. Yeah, we do. We have a small collection um, of materials for the Chadwick School. The Chadwick School has their own archives, which is wonderful. Um, I have not visited it, but I've seen some photographs of it. Um, so it's it's wonderful that Chadwick uh, is maintaining um, their archives. Um, that is that's great. Um, I wanted to to get back um, to the collection that we have with the, um, the our broader collection of materials related to education, public education on the peninsula, because not only do we have photographs in yearbooks of people, but that collection also has photographs of kids from the Mira Lest School. So they're actually younger kids. Um, and I had uh, somebody contact me a couple of years ago, I think it was pre-pandemic, and he attended Mirrorless School and he wanted to know if um, he could find his photograph. And in fact, we found um, his photograph in the Mirrorless School kit. So you never know what you're going to find in these collections, but you know, thankfully the, um, the school, Mirrorless, uh, turned those over to us. So that's kind of a, um, you know, that's, that's great for research and for people consulting those materials. So this actually is one of the ones um, with this one, we have the Malaga Cove um, Intermediate School Yearbook. So these aren't on the shelves, and you can you can probably see why, um, because they're just these tiny little things. Because this one, because it's just not that it wasn't that big, and there wasn't you know that many um, that many students who were there. So this is the 1964, 1965, um, and they are the Unified School District, but the Malaga Cove Intermediate School. Um, and you know it has all the faculty, just like our yearbooks today. Um, you'll see a lot of black and white, of course, in these earlier ones. And Sue was looking at our, you know, one from 2020, and those are yeah, that's a huge production. Oh, 2020? Yeah, yeah. Can you hold that? Up? Sure. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. It's got like 
A few more pages. A few more pages. It doesn't just have student pictures. It has like lots of stuff. And the big demonstration they had to end racism. Great. Wouldn't have been in 1965. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then all the all the pictures are in color. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the kind of research that we do, we did look in a one yearbook to oh, see yeah. if uh, JFK's assassination in 1963 was documented, and we didn't see it. So it was really um, kind of poignant to us that you know different eras really wanted to celebrate or uh, have information about certain things, and that definitely in 2020, yeah. Uh, there's a lot more commentary about what's happening in today's life. Instead yep. of those, those little black thumbnail, now we have reproductions of their student picture. Yes, so those are really fabulous. So and it's... Come a long way in the yearbook world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and it's not only, um, you know, we've been talking about, uh, you know, elementary, secondary schools, um, but the peninsula is also rich in uh, our higher education. And this is also something that, that folks might not be aware of. Um, even from the early times when the Palos Verdes Project, um, and I'm talking a hundred years ago, um, you know, there, there was talk of having a university here. Um, it was, in fact, the, um, the southern branch of the University of California. Of course, at that time, that was just Berkeley, and they were trying to locate their school here. And the Palos Verdes Project offered the regents, um, I think for a buck or maybe even for free, you know, a number of acres to locate the school here. Um, and we've got a map that kind of outlines that, which is really interesting. Um, that would basically be around um, the top of the hill, High Ridge, um, Gran Via Altamira and over towards, uh, you know, kind of down over here towards Silver Spur. So it was going to kind of be this wonderful top of the hill um, location. Um, but for whatever reason, the regions um, didn't want to do that and it went to Westwood, taking all of the traffic with it. So that was um, very, <laughs> so we did not get that. Um, you know, the, our, you know, Michelle has also been kind of researching um, a couple of the different schools that have um, been here as well. And the big one was Marymount. Oh, yes. So the uh, history with the Marymount High School and then later Marymount College and the different locations really has a fascinating and interesting history. Yeah. Um, and now that we have heard that the college is closing, we really hope that alumni understand the importance of collecting those memories and that we'll be able to start a collection here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's really interesting because, I mean, first at one location, then moving to another location, and then shutting down. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's often at these transition times uh, that we get materials. Um, you know, when something is closing, something is starting, um, it's a good time to reflect and say, oh, wait a second, um, you know, do we want to preserve that or how can we preserve that? And um, thankfully, we have a local history center where you can preserve um, that kind of uh, material. And then sometimes um, we really don't know. Yeah. You know, we, we work on so many different collections that I saw with the Rolling Hills Prep yearbooks yes. that we have them up to 2005. And right. so, you know, just it just occurred to me this week, like, do... Do we need to collect the ones that were missing, or yep. do they no longer have a yearbook? But again, that's how our, the community really helps us yep. be able to yep. um, preserve the history that we have on yep. the peninsula. The pandemic really hit us, uh, yearbook-wise. Um, I had to actually, uh, I reached out to both of the high schools, uh, to Peninsula High and, uh, and to Palos Verdes High and ask them if they would give us some, some copies. Um, so that was really nice. We had to actually go, because there was no, you know, generally the, the students and the yearbook committee will come by and donate one to us, which is fabulous. But because of COVID, that shut it down. And, um, but thankfully we do have, um, we were able to supplement our copies. And then yeah. I heard a rumor yeah. that we have a yearbook from one year yes. of a university. <laughs> yes, or a, a college. Or college. What you are referring to um, is the Palos Verdes State College. And I'm just going to go over here and see if I can pull it out. I think it's in here. Um, yes, here it is. So 
Um, at one time, people may people know, of course, about Cal State Dominguez Hills. Um, that is uh, one of the colleges um, in the state uh, system. In the 60s, there was talk about having that state college here, and it was to be called the Palos Verdes State College. Um, which in and of itself is fascinating, just that we would have you know, a, a university or a college here for our students to go to school. Um, it, there was a lot of hemming and hawing. They actually did open up. Um, and for one year, 1965 to 1966, there was a Palos Verdes State College at Palos Verdes. Um, and this is the Los Gitanos, the yearbook for, that, uh, for the college. There wasn't a location. Um, they were actually meeting in a building, in a bank building, and you can, we have a little picture of it, it was the California Federal Building. Do you remember that? You probably do yeah, remember that, yeah. yeah. So they were meeting in the California Federal Building. Wow, that's um, nice. Yeah, and they had, uh, you know, they, here's the faculty and the staff, but it was only here for one year, and then of course they pulled up stakes and decided to, um, to go to uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Um, but this little collection, um, I love this little collection because, um, well, I think you kind of gather on the architecture freak. But the um, architect <laughs> that was hired to create the plans for Palos Verde State College was um, Quincy, um, A. Quincy Jones. So we actually have those uh, plans. We had a little booklet um, that shows uh, what that college plan was, was going to look like. And that was going to be on Crest and High Ridge. So that's on the other side. Yeah, that was that entire area, Crest, High Ridge, um, you know, towards Hawthorne um, in, in that area. But they had a beautiful site. It's just incredible. Yeah. So we've really so, talked about the, the yearbooks and, and all that they have. We have some books um, yep. that talk about, you know, that are. Um, Margaret Chadwick uh -huh. has produced. Um, we have the photographs. Yes. And then there's also some oral histories uh -huh. that some of the residents have done about growing up and going to the schools uh -huh. on the peninsula. Yeah. So again, as I always say, why I love working in this <laughs> um, room is that we it is the breadth of the different kinds of resources that we have yeah. that we just you just don't really always find mm -hmm. in a, um, in a local history center. Yeah. Usually, it's in a college, and I That's just right. really um, think the library's done a fabulous job with the center. <laughs> and you Yay, too, go Monique. library, <laughs> <laughs> go library. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's actually true because a lot of special collections end up in university um, repositories, like university libraries, university special collections, and the access. Um, well, they have access, of course. It's a little bit more limited, I think, um, than, than what you can get in a local history room. So that, that's a good point um, that we have that here, you know, for residents to look at. Um, the yearbooks get a lot of foot traffic. Oh my people, gosh! People will be walking by, and and they'll you know see like because some of them are displayed with the covers, and they'll come in and ask for. It, it's just it's fascinating. It is they, a lot of interest. Yeah. Oh, it stops people dead in their tracks right there, um, and people want to see, uh, you know, see them so. And the covers are great, and the um, all of the yearbooks are really um, interesting to take a look at. I think what's really interesting is our early residents, you know, from the 1920s, really understood the importance of education and wanted to have control over, over that and creating a school district and a school system, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was really great. And I think that's really continued today. Um, you know, I know that when we moved into the area, uh, you know, school districts and, the, um, and the, uh, the, the top tier of the school district was a big a draw for us. And I think if you talk to any of the realtors here, that is one of the big things that brings people to the peninsula it, then, and I think that continues today, that we get, um, you know, uh, the, the school districts really pull in uh, people uh, to, to come and live here in this environment. So one of the stories that, uh, that it, it's actually a true story uh, that came about um, involving one of our schools was actually the Mira Les School. Um, and this was during um, the Cold War era where the school system and the school had an alarm system. And if there was going to be an incoming attack, um, a particular alarm would go off. And a, an alarm went off that said an attack was imminent within the hour, I think is what it was. 
And the school, you know, personnel called up whoever it is that's, you know, in charge of the alarm system and said, is this a test or did this actually, you know, go off? What's going on? And they said, we have no idea what that is all about. So they just had to assume that there was going to be an incoming attack. So this, the teachers um, rushed to get all of the children out and they walked them out of the school and actually walked them home. And it wasn't until a little bit later that they realized that this was actually just some quirk in the system and it was, um, I don't even know that it was a test, but it was a false alarm. And, um, and they, I, I, I'm not sure if the kids had to go back to school that day, poor things, they must have just been terrified, um, you know, having gone through what they did. But this episode actually was the basis, it became the basis for a movie called Ladybug, Ladybug. Um, we do have the, uh, we have it in our collection here, um, and it was, I mean, just of the time period, it's what inspired that, um, that movie. Um, we found a couple of newspaper um, uh, articles um, about it, about the, about the episode um, at the Miraless School, but then also about it being the, um, uh, having become, or, you know, caused, uh, or be the basis of the movie. Um, and, you know, I did not even know about that. This is, I think, you said this earlier, Michelle, which I thought was interesting. We don't know what we have in our collection until people come in and start wanting right. to do research. And um, I had a PVIC docent, I'm going to mention his name, Bob Murphy, um, a couple of years ago. He was interested in military history on the peninsula. And um, he just used the collection in all sorts of different ways. Um, you know, the docents have to do a paper in order to be a, uh, to be a docent there. And he did his paper on the military history. He was interested in the Cold War, spies on the peninsula. And it was because of Bob that I actually discovered in, in the school district materials, and in fact, in one of the, um, the student handbooks, uh, you know, how they did these drills, and um, that's how we actually discovered um, this information. So you, you just never know what you're gonna find, um, you know, in the, in the collection. Yeah, we found that the, uh, the Malaga Cove Library was gonna be a, um, you know, a, a shelter, uh, you know, if something were to happen. So it's just, um, we, we really can find out a lot of information from our collection, from our researchers. Right, exactly. Just great. And for some of us, you know, that was the earthquake drills that we were yep. doing in grade school. But then when we want to do, you know, have um, a student wants to do a report about a different era and what was happening, and we really have that material about um, the Cold War era and what people really had to go through and felt. You know, th you know, these stories really show, you know, um, you know, or anyway, are just great yeah. stories because yeah. it's not just what's on paper, but really some of the feelings that are happening. Yes. And that time capsule letter um, is fascinating and it gets just to that. Of course, it's pr just prior to World War II. Um, and, you know, one of the authors, one of the students who authored it, uh, except several of them actually, were the, our Japanese, uh, the children of our Japanese farmers. So that was also very poignant. They're not talking that much about TV. They're not talking about um, playing on their Game Boys. Um, video you know, or video games, nothing like that. They're just talking about what their life is like. Um, you know, the, the topics of the day uh, that were occurring at that time. You know, the food that they eat. Um, and they are actually recounting that for us to look at that um, years later. So you really find that. So I, um, I encourage anybody who wants to take a look at that um, uh, time capsule letter to come and take a look. I bring that um, uh, time capsule letter out with Cub Scouts who come to visit um, the local history center. And in fact, one of our librarians, her son, um, says to this day, he remembers the local history center. And I think it was because of that time capsule letter, <laughs> because he could read what the kids were doing. Couldn't believe that there was no you know, game. Just like, what, what do you guys do? So, it's really fun. Yeah, it's so fun to be able to see um, that to see it come to life when we weren't part of that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. you really do see it. <laughs> but the other fun thing about the yearbooks is it looks like they have different names. They're titled. They're, yeah, Chadwick wow, says the dolphin. The dolphin from 58. <laughs> That's dolphin. pretty awesome. Then we have back there the Triton for Palace Verities. There's the Triton for 66. And the Triton for 66. 
um, yeah, so they're different. They did uh, Los, Los Quitanos for the, uh, yeah. the Palos Verde State College. Uh, so that's kind of this. And Los Quitanos is for gypsies. And I think that was because they had to move around so much. <laughs> but there we have it. I think that's actually why, they, why that, that was. That was pretty clever. I, they're pretty clever, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it'll I be think fun for us to learn more information about yeah, some of these some things that projects. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thanks for giving us some more research projects, Sue. That's, that's just what we need. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up uh, right here for today. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode of History on the Hill. Thanks.